Matthew 8 1 and when he come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him and they're following Jesus and behold there came a leper and worshiped him Jesus saying Lord Jesus if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean now notice what the leper said he approaches Jesus he's got leprosy in the Old Testament law was you're to abandon yourself. You're to go off by yourself, put your finger and go, unclean, unclean, stay away from me. He walks up to Jesus. He falls down and worships him. And he says, if thou wilt, will you, will you, Thou canst make me clean. The leper has faith that Jesus can make him clean. That's not the question. The question is not, can Jesus do it? He says, do can. You are able. The question is, will you? And we run across this, this atmosphere in prayer life. We come to God with many petitions for ourselves and hopefully for others. Some of those petitions we seem that don't get answered. They bounce off the clouds and come back into the grave. And one of those aspects is, well actually two. The first thing is he came to Jesus. You know, when we talk about the story of Jesus walking on the water, the Bible says in the Gospels that he would have kept on going had not the disciples called out to him. The two men on the road in Amos were going to go into the house and have a meal. He was going to keep on going unless they said, come with us. The angels would have slept in the streets of Sodom had not lied. Come on in. Jesus in our church age is standing at the door knocking, wanting you to come out. So the very first thing you've got to learn is you got to come to Jesus. There are people out there, you know, I'll let God do it. God will do it. I'm not going to pray. I'll let God do it. That's not scriptural. you got to seek God. When, when God told Noah to, to, to build the ark, the Bible says before that he was just. He obeyed. He was there. And I'm going to assume that he carried on conversations with God. At the atmosphere and, and, the, and the reactions to eating the fruit, Adam and Eve did not seek God no more. They hid from God. They hid from each other. This man, a leper, according to the Jewish law, says you stay away from them. Walks up to God, worships him. If thou wilt, will you? Thou canst make me clean. There's the faith. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. And that's other things we can talk about. He said, I will be thou clean. Now the question is, can Jesus heal the lepers? Yeah, he's been doing it all along. Is he able to heal this leper? Yes. And the leper goes to him and says, listen, I know you can do it. Will you? Do you come to God in your prayer life believing with faith? I know you can do it, God. And not demanding, God, give it to me. I've done that. Sorry to say. 
But have you come to God in faith and believing? I know you can do it. But will you? Because you get the aspect of God, he answers prayer three ways. Yes, I will. Be thou clean. No. And not now. You know, you read stories of, of, of Christians in their life, and they prayed, prayed, and you know what? That prayer was never answered until after they died. How's that work for answering? 9.28 of Matthew. And when he came into the house, the blind men came to him. Jesus said to him, Believe ye that I'm able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. The blind men came into him. You have to go to Jesus. Now, Jesus may come in your pathway. He may come to your door. If someone came to my front door, eventually, they're going to walk away. And it could be that company bringing the, bringing the balloons and you, you won $10 million. If I don't answer that door, I don't get the balloons and I don't get, I don't get the $10 million. Now, there's one time in the Bible that four people brought their friend on a bed and broke down the roof and, and put him down to Jesus. But they came to Jesus. They came to God. You cannot have a prayer life. Um, um, you have got to come to the, to the footstep of the throne of grace, Christian, where the Bible says we are, and you've got to petition God through Jesus Christ. You must. And you must believe. He said then he touched... Uh, then touch he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open. We're going to look at a passage of Scripture. Maybe it's not happening. Maybe God's wanting to say, Yes, I will. I can. You are lacking faith. There's a man who had a son who was lunatic. And he cries, oh, Lord, I'm not paraphrasing. I believe, but help my unbelief. Is there something that you want, you believe, but you struggle with belief? Tell it to Jesus. Is there something you want? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to the Father. Come to the Father. Come to the Father with the aspect, here I am, Father. Yes, I know you can do it. I got faith and belief you can do it. Yes, can you? I mean, I'm sorry for those who don't have a father, but have you ever gotten anything you wanted from your father and you never asked him? How can your father know outside mom or Brothers and sisters, how can your father know there is a request, your earthly father? Let's say you're, 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 you've got a, uh, a tire is flat on your bike. How is your father going to know? Unless you make a request. Yeah, I know. Our heavenly father knows everything. I know that. And knowing everything. The all-knowing God wants you to ask for. He wants to hear from you. And he wants others to hear for you. 
And he wants you to pray for others. You see, it was the blind man and the man of leprosy. They came themselves as Jesus in belief. There was the four friends that brought their man on the bed. There's nothing wrong with asking your fellow brethren to pray for you. But are you praying for you? I know there are some people I met, oh, I never pray for myself. What did the leper do? The leper say, hey, you know that guy over there has got leprosy? We've been, we've been here X amount of years. Can you heal him? No, he's in me. This blind man. There are other blind men. Me. Tons of people came to Jesus. Me. And there are some that came to Jesus. My son at home. This person here. There were Individuals that came to Jesus in faith. There was one man that came to Jesus lacking faith. There were friends of a man who brought their friend to Jesus. There was people who came to Jesus and said, he's at home. He's there. And there are many times that Jesus spoke to his disciples that the lack of faith, the lack of belief, is what hinders your prayer life. Those, those disciples, that lunatic, they couldn't, he, they couldn't heal him. And they said, why couldn't we do it? You lacked faith. You didn't believe. How come I'm not getting this prayer request? You lack faith. You don't believe. Maybe a motive. We'll look at another one in a moment. Oh, Matthew 10, I hope. Can't read my writing. Oh man. Forty forty. Thank you. Maybe Mark. I apologize with my ailments. I shouldn't be writing. There are 42. I really thought. Uh, okay, uh, 1046. I apologize. But. And there came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timothy, Timothy sat by the highway, highway side begging. And when he heard that Jesus was a Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on him. And many charged him and said, he should hold his feet. In other words, shut up. <laughs> but he cried the more with a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on him. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Now, here's the opportunity. Now, here's blind Bartimaeus. What did he do? Hey, I heard about Jesus. What are you going to do? Jesus, Father, let the Father hear your petition. Let Jesus hear your petition. I don't care how many Christians there are in the world. I don't care how many unsaved people in the world. There was a crowd of people here. And guess what? Jesus heard him. Don't think God's not going to hear you. Don't think God's not going to listen to you. Listen, I know David said that in the Psalms. But that's it. God heard him. But David's reaction is God's not answering him. I need it right now. And God's like, no, not right now. Wait it out. And you're going to have times in your prayer life. I had times in my prayer life. You're going to think, God, you're not listening. Oh, he's listening. He's not answering my time frame. But cry out to God. There's another thing, too. Why Mario Bay is sat at the highway side? What if that day when Jesus went through it, what if blind, blind bar man, what if you say, you know what, I'm not going there today. And I didn't say church, I said anywhere. I have been blessed at a grocery store. I have been blessed at a traffic light. 
I have been blessed everywhere, including a church building. I've been, I, yeah, I've been blessed at work. My daughter came home from work today. She had a bag of goodies that they gave her, for, you know, for her time being there and being a CNA. What well, if she didn't go to work today? And the thing I'm saying is, what if you miss the opportunities with God? You are somewhere where you're not supposed to be. And I know people say church, church, church. I can't go to church every Sunday. Now, if somebody from my church would be so nice enough to come out of the way and pick me up, okay, they don't. They got a church bus, they don't come pick me up. That's fine. Don't go post on Facebook. Don't tell your church. It's Sunday. Be in church. It's Sunday. I'd love to be in church. I can't. There are people in nursing homes. There are people who, who are in a hospital. There are people who can't get out. There are people who don't have cars. Well, let's say somebody. I'm trying to think of the word. They, they're homebound. Um, shut in. Whatever, health, whatever it is. And they're able to go out and walk to their mailbox. And they go out and check their mailbox Thursday. And somebody left a bag of groceries out there. Wow, just going to go check the mailbox and get a blessing. What if they say, I'm never going to check the mail again? I'm not going to go to that. It could rain. The neighborhoods could see it and steal it. It could get uh, destroyed by the dogs, the wind, the weather. What if, like I said, my, my daughter got something there. What if they, I'm not going to go to work today. I'm tired. And you missed an opportunity for a promotion, a reward. What if you didn't go here and... God had somebody there for you to tell them the gospel about Jesus Christ and they would have gotten saved. Blind Bartimaeus was sitting by the highway side and Jesus came by. And not only was he seated, Jesus would have kept on walking if he had not cried out for God. If you're not where you're supposed to be, you're going to miss the opportunity. If you don't cry out to Jesus, you're not going to get his attention. James. War. But when it comes to our wars and fightings among us, and there's all kinds of wars and fighting today. Why? Why are there wars? Sin. <laughs> Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that you war in your members? And we got a battle right now. This morning, before waking up, I, I sinned in my dreams. I got up and I plead to the Lord to forgive me, confess it. A diabetic wars in his life, like that piece of candy. The one that smokes cigarettes wars again to have another cigarette. The man with alcohol to have another can of beer. The man who watches pornography, I want to see one more picture. It's fighting what your flesh wants to do, and the Holy Spirit says no. Ye lust. Paul says in Romans 7, that's coveting. And have not. You want things, you don't get them. You don't have them. Oh, if I had this vacation. Oh, if I can go on this cruise. Oh, if I can go down to Ratland. Ye kill. Hmm. 
and desire to have. You know, it's funny, we have in America last few many years, there's been people shooting and killing other people. And it's not to get nothing. I'm saying like these school shootings. They go in there and they shoot these people in the schools and they don't want nothing. They just go in there to kill. It's a desire to have. There are times where you hear, you know, in a grocery store, a convenience store, is they go in there and they shoot the clerk and kill them and they take the money and take whatever they get. Okay, there's a desire to have and an end up a death. In Proverbs chapter 1, it talks about a group of people. We're going to go kill this man and we're going to take his desires. You're getting these shootings, these killings. And they're just doing it because whatever reason. And cannot obtain. There are some people throughout history, they have been murdered. And the murderer did not get what they wanted. And again, the guy walks into a store, he shoots the clerk, he takes the twenty dollars that was in the in the cash box, he gets caught, he don't get the twenty dollars. You fight and war. It's all around us. Russia. The, the constant tensions of, of uh, Korea, South and North, and China. Yet, you have not. Russia does not have the Ukraine. Ukraine does not have Russia. America fights, they don't have every seat taken by the Republicans and they don't have every place taken by the Democrats. Because you asked not. Did that? You didn't ask. You did not seek God. And as a result of not seeking God, there are wars. You know, there were men, military leaders in the Old Testament that read, listen, God sent me to go battle. Egypt told the king of Judah, God told me to go over there. Don't, don't intervene with us. God sent me to, to go battle with them. And God did. God sent Babylonia into Judah because Judah didn't seek God properly. What if blind Bartimaeus never cried out to Jesus? He'd be still blind, and Jesus would have gone up the road. Oh, no, Jesus would have No, he wouldn't have. That's not the way of Jesus. We're not talking about the modern, charismatic, uh, contemporary church today. We're talking about the biblical Jesus. He would keep on going. He's dying on the cross, and that dying thief repents and gets right. And Jesus attends to his needs and his salvation. Did he make the other thief get saved? No. But the thief that did get saved witnessed to the other thief. The gospel, not church. He asked. Okay, I did ask God. And receive not. I didn't get it. Because you ask amiss. That you may consume it upon your life. Maybe what you're asking for. Is lustful. It has no purpose. But to satisfy your lust. It would, maybe it would ruin your fellowship with God. Maybe it would break your time with God. Oh, Lord God, I wanted this job. I wanted this position, this job. And you would not be able to go to church. You adulterers and adulterers, knowing not this friendship with the world is enmity, hatred with God, 
God don't want you friends with the world. You gotta get along. No, you know. Whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Look at that. The church today is a friend of the world. You're an enemy of God. Hebrews. Hebrews. 11 sick. Now, what about these religions? What about these atheists? But without faith, see, there's a faith and belief. It's impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe, faith and belief, that he is. That he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, see faith, belief, seek. You're an atheist. God ain't going to listen to you. Unless you atone of your atheism and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're an evolutionist. God ain't going to listen to you. If you don't have faith in him. And you don't believe in him. I'm a Catholic. Are you a Pope Catholic or are you a God Catholic? Because if you are a Pope Catholic and it's the church, and it's Mary, and it's the bees, it's candles, it's, it's purgatory, you don't believe in God because the Catholic God is not the God of the Bible. Now you can go to Catholic Church and be saved and you're there. You don't think it marries the salvation. You know Mary's not the salvation. You know the... But you're, 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 you're misunderstanding. Whatever it is. There's a difference between a lost Catholic and a saved Catholic. But the, the lost Catholic... God ain't listening to your prayer. God especially is not listening to your prayer for the lost. And that goes for all the religions. And that goes for all the atheists. As far as they go, the one prayer that God's going to, to listen to them is the faith and belief that Jesus is able to save their soul. Well, I, I know an unsaved family, and they prayed, and maybe it was a, a friend that was a Christian. I mean, does God listen to the unsaved? Yeah, he does. But 